Hello, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and today we're doing another round in the Vivino wine tasting series. I'm going to taste these six white wines that have been included in the best value category of the 2020 Vivino Wine Stars Awards. And I'm going to check for you whether they are any good. Ready? As always, I'm not sponsored by Vivino and I will review these wines completely independently. I just know from your comments that a lot of you guys use the app and find these tastings useful in order to separate the good from the bad wines. Vivino started the Wine Styles Awards a few years ago and they claim that they are the only wine industry awards that are determined solely by wine drinkers, not by wine experts or critics. For the sixth edition, Vivino went through millions of reviews in order to find the best whites, reds and sparkling wines, as well as the best value wines. In order to qualify for the awards, a wine must have received at least 50 reviews on Vivino. I selected best value wines that cost less than 30 euros, have received great scores and should be fairly widely available. So you should be able to find most of these wines in your markets if you want to taste along. I will taste them not blind as most Vivino users would and I'm looking forward to finding out whether this award is actually something to go by. So let's pull out those corks and get tasting. Yeah, that's how the master does it. <clears throat> so let's start off with the first wine, the 2019 Gavi di Gavi La Scolca Etichetta Nera. Gavi di Gavi is 100% from the Cortese grape and it's from the northwest of Italy, from the Piemont region around the town of Gavi. Gavi di Gavi is a bit of a hype wine. Oftentimes it is quite expensive and pretty thin and diluted. La Scolca, however, is one of the pioneering producers in the region that have really focused on higher quality wines. So let's see whether this is any good. The wine has received 4.0 stars on Vivino. And from what I've learned, this is roughly equal to 90 points in the 100 point scale. Okay, so this taste of green apple pear a little bit of thyme as well, so you have some herbaceous notes there. On the palate, it's quite juicy, it's fresh, it's vibrant, there's quite a bit of acidity there, but not a lot of body. It has 12% of alcohol, which is great. It's a fresh and lively wine. It is more concentrated than most Gavi di Gavis that I've tasted before, which can be quite diluted. I don't really see this as a great value wine though. I think this is probably an 87 point wine in my book and it costs 25 euros or 30 US dollars. So I think for that price, you can find really amazing Rieslings, Jenners or other wines from other regions that are far more cheap and bring a lot more concentration and richness to the plate. But it's a Gavi di Gavi. If you want a Gavi di Gavi, this is probably one of the best ones you can have. But I just wouldn't buy another bottle of it. So let's move on to the second wine. So the next one is the 2019 Eliado Pinheiro Envidia Cochina, which is an Albarino from Rias Baixas. I'm quite looking forward to tasting this wine because the label is quite intriguing. It is a cartoon character and I have no idea what they really want to tell me with this label. But Envidia Cochina apparently means eat your heart out. And I don't really know why the wine is called that. They try to explain it on the label. I don't really get it. It's probably me that just doesn't get it. I'm a bit stupid sometimes. This should be quite interesting. It was rated on Vivino with 4.2 stars and it retails around 22 euros. So let's see whether it's worth that. So Rias Baixas is a pretty exciting DO in Galicia in the northwest of Spain. This is very close to the Vinho Verde region in Portugal and the grape variety is 100% Albarino. The vines are pretty old. They are 40 years old on average and grow on granite subsoils and the climate is pretty cool and damp in that region, very much influenced by the Atlantic. So the wine smells of lemon zest, ripe apple, but you also have this freshly baked bread character there, which is quite beautiful. On the palate, it's actually quite rich and concentrated, even though it finishes fresh and lively. But if you look at it in the glass, it already looks pretty concentrated. So you have quite a lot of power there, quite a lot of concentration. The finish is very long. You almost have a slightly salty finish here. So I would drink this with seafood. If you have, for example, pan seared scallops, this should be a beautiful, beautiful match. I would rate this 92 points. So this is pretty good. 
and I certainly agree with the people at Vivino that this is high quality. I think also the price is pretty fair. So we're moving from the western edge of Europe to a region that is actually pretty close to my home, to Alsace. And I'm tasting the 2017 Trimbach Pinot Gris Reserve, which received 3.9 stars on Vivino. And it retails at 20 euros to 30 US dollars. The Trimbach family can actually trace their roots back to 1626. And they are now in the 13th generation of winemakers, which is pretty amazing. They produce everything from pretty entry level level basic wines to the very high-end best wines from the regions. The most famous ones are probably Clos saint dune and Cuvée Friedrich Emil, but wait a second. <laughs> so this is actually the 2008 Cuvée Friedrich Emil Riesling, which was named after Friedrich Emil Trimbach, who received the highest distinction at the Brussels Wine Fair in 1898. But we're not going to taste this today. We are tasting this, the more entry level Pinot Gris Reserve. So let's try it. Pinot Gris was also named Tokai d'Alsace until the term was outlawed in 2007 in order to avoid confusion with the wine growing region of Tokai. The wines tend to be a little bit more rich and concentrated over there as compared to Grauburgunder in Germany or Pinot Grigio from Italy. Pinot Gris often has a pink hue. This is because the berries of the grapes tend to have a slightly darker skin. They look a little bit reddish and it's difficult to get that color out of the wine. So um, this is quite typical in a blind tasting. This is a good indicator that you have a Pinot Gris in front of you. This wine is quite concentrated and rich. It smells of ripe pear, a little bit of plums. It smells a little bit of mango as well. So it's quite ripe, a little bit more exotic in flavor profile. On the palate it's quite rich and velvety. There's even a little bit of vanilla coming through. So it's quite concentrated and big. I'm not the biggest fan of Pinot Gris from Alsace because they tend to be a little bit too round and lack structure in my opinion. This is quite typical but it's not necessarily a great wine. It lacks a little bit of balance. I would rate this 88 points and I think it is not bad value. So now I'm going to the other side of the world to California, the Napa Valley and I'm tasting this Dax Leap Aveta Sauvignon Blanc from the 2018 vintage and this retails for 30 US dollars, 30 euros roughly and it scored 4.1 stars on Vivino. Let's try it. Stag Sleep is a very famous winery in California. It's the winery that actually won the 1976 Judgment of Paris, where the best wines of France competed against the best wines of California. If you want to learn more about this, watch my video on California. I'll link it up somewhere up there. So half of the wine was fermented in stainless steel and half of it was fermented in oak. And all of it was then aged in barriques. So you have a great combination of toasty oak aroma, but also passion fruit and gooseberry flavors, some lemon and orange flavors. So it's all very balanced in the nose. There's great complexity there. So on the palate, it's richer and more concentrated than a Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire or from Marlborough in New Zealand, for example but it is still quite fresh and has great body, great concentration. It reminds me more of a Bordeaux Sauvignon Blanc, a great quality Sauvignon Blanc from Bordeaux. I would have hoped that the wine has a little bit more freshness and vibrancy on the finish and that the alcohol was a little bit lower. I would still rate this as 91 points. I think it's a great wine, a beautiful wine, a very complex wine, but maybe they should pick a little bit earlier or get fruit that is less ripe in order to bring in more balance. So the next one is the 2018 Ossian Verdejo from Nieva in Spain. This was rated 4.1 stars on Vivino and cost roughly 30 US dollars. So this sounds actually pretty interesting because it's from really old ungrafted vineyards. It's not 100% clear what ungrafted vines actually bring to the table. In this region, phylloxera couldn't spread because the soils are pretty sandy and it just can't move very well in sandy soils 
pretty clear though that old vineyards are very good for quality. Old vineyards usually bring less fruit, more concentrated flavors and are more reliable in extreme circumstances. So old vineyards can produce some of the greatest wines in the world. Verdejo, the grape variety used in this wine is actually quite interesting. It reminds me a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc and produces some really aromatic, some interesting wines coming out of Rueda, the region most associated with this grape variety. This this smells quite different to most Rueda Verdejos. It actually still smells a little bit of Verdejo, but the oak influence is quite pronounced. So you mainly have like chocolatey and cedar wood flavors that dominate the aroma of the wine. And also the texture is quite different to normal Verdejo. It's quite rich and concentrated, quite powerful. There's liveliness and freshness at the finish, but it's mainly quite a big and concentrated wine. I'm actually a little bit disappointed about this wine. When I read up on the story behind the wine, I was actually quite excited to taste it. But now I don't feel as excited anymore. I think the oak is quite dominant and doesn't really let anything else come to the surface. So it feels very much like a wine that could be from lots of different places. It is just quite round, rich and powerful. I have to recognize though that this is high quality winemaking. It just lacks the excitement factor. I would rate this wine 89 points. This is very well made, but it could be from anywhere else in the world. So here comes the last wine, the 2018 Chardonnay El Enemico from Mendoza in Argentina. It got 4.3 stars on Vivino, which is an amazing score. And it retails between 20 euros and 30 US dollars. James Suckling gave it 97 points, which made me a little bit suspicious, but I'm trying not to let that influence me. So let's taste it. So this one is made by Adriana Catena, the youngest daughter of Nicolas Catena and Alejandro Vigil, the head of oenology at Catena Sabata. Adriana Cantena is an historian as far as I know, so I don't really know what her involvement with the winery is. But Alejandro Vigil is one of the most highly regarded winemakers in South America. El enemigo means the enemy and the story behind the name is at the end of the journey we remember only one battle, the one we fought against ourselves, the original enemy, the one that defined us. Well. This is a Chardonnay from Guattarari in Mendoza and it's aged in 500 liter French oak barrels. The interesting thing about this wine is that it's also partially aged under flour. Flour is a yeast layer that we know from sherry for example or Jura. This develops on those wines if you leave a little bit of space in the barrel. They also do that to add a little bit more spice, a little bit more texture, just another dimension to the wine. This is really nice. I gotta say I'm not a huge fan of Argentinian Chardonnays in general and there are some great examples and some bad ones but oftentimes they are a bit boring and a bit rich and plush and lack texture and energy but this is quite complex. It is intense and concentrated. The flavors are quite ripe. You have flavors of peach, ripe lemon, but you also have some almond, some chestnut, some nutty characters that are coming through. This might be the influence of the floor as well as the oak, but the oak flavor is very well integrated. On the palate, you have lots of richness and concentration, but the wine finishes fresh. So I would rate this wine 93 points. I think it is absolutely delicious and it's definitely a real good value. Great Chardonnay for 20 euros or 30 US dollars is not that easy to find. And this certainly is a great Chardonnay, a wine that tells a very exciting story. And I also like that they did something a bit special here with the integration of floor yeast. I mean, this is not something that a lot of people do and they really did a great job with this. So well done. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then please like it down here, subscribe to my channel. Obviously, my question of the day is which suggestions for videos do you have? Which formats do you like? Which ones don't you like? Please comment down below and let me know. I hope I see you guys again soon. I will taste this beautiful Chardonnay tonight. I hope you have something great in your glass as well. But whatever you do, stay thirsty. Mm -hmm.